is it that my hat is a lampshade or is it that my lampshade is a hat? Hi. Um, today I wanted to actually just kind of tack something on to the previous video you just watched. It's a very good video. It covers a lot of the bases. It just kind of misses out on this one little application that gives energy that I found super interesting when I first made sense of it for myself. Um, and it's something that applies to your everyday life, which should be like really meaningful to you, hopefully. Um, so you should have, you should recognize this image from the previous video, and it lays out what the sign of delta H, whether it's positive or negative, and what the sign of delta S, whether it's positive or negative, means about the spontaneity of your chemical process, or physical process for that matter. And so to take a look, I, I wanted to kind of dig deeper into what happens when water or ice melts. Super simple reaction. Um, and what we need to do is we just need to figure out where it falls on this graph, on this chart, I'm sorry. Uh, so we should know at this point that the delta H should be greater than zero because this is endothermic. And we should also be able to look at this and figure out that the delta S is also greater than zero because we're transitioning from a solid into a liquid. Liquids are more chaotic, less organized, and therefore at a higher entropy. So that makes us fall directly into this bin. So I think it's pretty clear to figure out which processes are always spontaneous and never spontaneous in terms of delta G. It just gets a little bit muddled when it says when they're both when both uh, have the same sign that it's spontaneous at high temperatures. And the question is how high is high? Like at what temperature does that happen? And in order to investigate this a little bit more numerically, I thought it would be a good idea to go get some numbers and that's why I picked uh, melting ice. Because if you look at what temperature water is, then you should be able to figure out the delta G. But I'm actually going to approach this from a slightly different angle. Instead of thinking about what the temperature is and what that does to delta G, if the, subs, if the process is going to go from being non-spontaneous to spontaneous, or go from being spontaneous to being non-spontaneous, it means the sign of delta G is going to change. And that's really important because if the sign of delta G is going to change, there has to be a point where the delta G is zero. You can't go from being positive to negative without crossing through zero. And that's where we might see something interesting. So I went through and I found some information for the process of turning solid water into liquid water. And what we see here is that this is our unit for the uh, entropy of the process and this is the unit for the enthalpy. I'm going to make this H really wide because it's actually bothering me slightly that there's a space between the delta and the H. Uh, and I'm going to take a white and I'm just going to see if I can't cover that up. Much better. So much better. Looks fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to try and start with my delta G equation. Now, I'm going to give you a minute, because what we're looking for here is, like I said, if delta G is going to cross from being negative to positive or positive to negative, it's going to have to equal zero at some point. And that's the point I'm interested in. At what temperature is delta G equal to zero? So pause the video. You have the information there. I want you to take a minute and try and calculate it for yourself. No, really. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, I hope you took a minute to try and figure this out. I hope you're back and I hope you're ready. So I'm just gonna start plugging in with the numbers I have. Uh, I've been given here delta H, that's off the of table B for uh, ice melting, right? Solid water becoming liquid water. That's, uh, that amount of energy is equal to the heat of fusion. So that number is 334 joules per Kelvin, joules per gram, I'm sorry, uh, and then minus T, times 22 joules per mole Kelvin. So I would love to do math right now, but I don't think I can do math right now because my units don't match. So even if I was going to try and isolate T, it wouldn't work. So instead what I'm going to do is I need to convert. I need to figure out what 334 joules per gram is in terms of 
joules per mole. And the way I'm going to do that is I'll do my dimensional analysis. Uh, I want grams to cancel, so I'm actually going to put it on the top. I'll put moles on the bottom, one. And since we're talking about water, I'm going to use a couple more decimals, 18.016 grams per mole. And when you do that, what you end up with, uh, keeping in mind the significant figures we started with, is 6,020. So now we can step in and do some algebra. I'm going to move things over. So T times 22 joules per mole K equals 6,020 joules per mole, which means that the temperature is equal to 6,020 joules per mole divided by 22 joules per mole K. If we cancel out our units and do our math, what we end up with is that T is equal to 273.6 K. So that number is a little bit off of what it should be for two reasons. I did round, and also I think that the entropy of melting isn't exactly 22. It's got a, a decimal to it. It's a little bit larger, so that's going to make this number just a little bit smaller. But you should recognize this number. That's zero degrees Celsius. So that's meaningful to me because that means at zero degrees Celsius, that's the temperature where melting and freezing goes from being spontaneous to being not spontaneous. And the values of T are actually really indicative of what happens for this delta G process. Because when the temperature is higher than 273 Kelvin, that means that this T delta S term is going to be larger, and since you're subtracting it, the delta G ends up being zero. In other words, melting is spontaneous when the temperature is above zero Celsius. Which makes sense. Like, if you're outside in the world and the temperature is above zero Celsius, you're going to have liquid water. Any solid water will spontaneously, on its own, turn into liquid. Uh, and it also means in the other direction, that if the temperature is lower, then this same term becomes smaller. And if you're subtracting a number and it's smaller, then the overall sum ends up, or difference, ends up getting larger. And delta G will cross over and become positive. And that means when the temperature is less than 273, then melting becomes a non-spontaneous process. And then the opposite, remember what we learned about Hess's law when we flipped the reaction, we negate the delta H, we also negate the delta G. So if temperature is less than 273, then the delta G for freezing becomes negative, which is why water freezes when it gets cold outside at night. I just thought it was super interesting to like really shed a light on these processes that are only spontaneous under certain conditions where this is one that you've seen it happen and you've seen the conditions under which it happens. So I hope this brought a little bit more reality to these numbers and these terms as they're flying around. Thanks for watching.